complex eigenvalues work largely how you might expect at this point, although there are some differences. Say that you have complex eigenvalues. Yeah. Well, first of all, complex eigenvalues occur in conjugate pairs. So P plus QI, P minus QI. What you might expect is that each of these eigenvalues is going to give us a solution. That doesn't turn out to be correct, though. We're going to select one of these eigenvalues and work entirely with it. It doesn't matter which of the two we select. Let's say we select the addition, P plus QI. This complex eigenvalue is going to have a complex eigenvector. And from past experience, we expect the solution to be the eigenvector times E raised to the eigenvalue times t. And because we have seen Euler's form to the before, it will probably come as no surprise that we're going to rewrite this complex exponentiation in terms of sines and cosines. We do observe some differences here from when we've looked at complex and imaginary stuff before, when we were looking at individual equations whose characteristic polynomial had complex roots, we had constants in front of the cosine and in front of the sine, and the imaginary unit I was absorbed into one of those constants. So this is a little different from what we've seen before, but I hope basically unsurprising. Now, we are going to get two solutions from this. We've got in one solution, x equals this, but we're going to turn that into two. How are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we're going to perform this multiplication, a plus bi times this. Remember that i squared is negative one. So this term and this term became negative. And now we are going to separate our real terms from our imaginary terms. So here is our solution written as a real part plus an imaginary part. However, this one solution you see is the sum of these two terms. Well, that's what I just said. And what I now claim is that this, and this 
are too linear the independent solutions. So that this solution we just found is actually made up of two solutions. And the reason this is true, this X is a solution on the entire complex plane. So in particular, this X is a solution on the real axis. And this X is a solution on the imaginary axis. When we are looking at the real axis, all of this imaginary stuff vanishes and we just have this. When we're looking at the imaginary axis, or the real stuff vanishes and we just get this. So this and this are two solutions. This is the solution on the real axis. This is the solution on the imaginary axis. And those so these solutions are linearly independent. I mean, you could use the Rontskian, for example, to demonstrate that. So instead of just having this one solution, X, we get two linearly independent solutions. And that's just what we needed. We have two eigenvalues. We need two linearly independent solutions. And we got them. And we got them entirely by looking at this eigenvalue. We don't have any work that we need to do with P minus QI. I should say in passing that although all of this works out mathematically, it is in practice harder to deal with complex roots. And in particular, our calculator will not find these complex eigenvectors for us.